Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm absolutely fabulous. Well, it's such an honor to be talking to one of the most sexiest redheads of all time. Why, thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Last night I watched uh, your classic first movie, Hot. It really is a classic. I mean, it, it holds up to just exactly what it is, which is a fabulous, fun rock. But it's funny, it's a great team now to the community and stuff. They're probably just even regular. <laughs> well, it, it is tame. There are some moments in there, though, that I think you either could get away with now or you couldn't. But, yeah. Absolutely, it, absolutely. I don't mean the political correctness stuff. Definitely because none of that in our movie. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I first saw it, I was about 13. It was the, uh, the, the night after my dad saw it for the first time. He's like, hey, last night I was up late and I saw Danny Partridge in bed with a seal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was great with Danny Partridge. He was a super talent in a lot of ways. He's really great. Yeah. How did you get this role? I got this role because I was dating someone really famous whose agent wanted to get me out of the picture because he was a lot older than me. Mm -hmm. He was just breaking away from the sports world to get into acting and he thought it was a bad idea for him to be caught with a 19 year old. So he was in his acting. He sent me on this. This is actually like the big thing for every story in Hollywood that he's up for. Thing. It's a 
one of the most incredible experiences of my life, too. And again, that's a funny story how I got that. I was dancing in this club, you know, like a total club. Um, Helena's, I don't know if you remember that. It was like the, the coolest club to go to in the mid to late 80s. Oh, and um, he, the head of Universal, uh, Josh Dunn was there, and he found me, and he actually had grown up in Palm Springs, too. And he goes, oh my God, we should be great to this. You can sing, and blah, blah, blah. So I went in, and I met with Tom Mangley, who's the director, and I had to sing really badly. And I used to sing. I was the singer of the band and the pianist, and, um, and I can sing, so he said, I don't want you to sing well. I like to sing where it's funny. So I came up with this bizarre reincarnation voice of Marilyn and the girl, and that's how I did it. It was a takeoff on the Playboy Mansion once again. It was uh, just sheer fun, and I got to work with some of the most incredible talents on the planet, from Dan Aykroyd to Tom Hanks to Christopher Plummer, Daphne Coleman, Elizabeth Ashley. It was just it was so much fun, and with some of my best girlfriends, too. Ava Fabian and Donna Spear. And, and Ava was in Playboy's private party just made for a while. Mm -hmm. And I did, of course, all those Eddie Kadiris films with Donna Spear. So it was just sheer bliss shooting at Universal Studio Lot. It was just so cool. Yeah, my dad. That was a huge hit. That movie was another huge hit. Yeah, my dad and I, we love that movie. We've been watching it over 30 years and quoting all the lines and stuff. We had a good time watching that movie. Because he, he grew up watching the, the, the uh, show, you know? Right, right. And so, yeah, he got me into all that. And it's just, I love it. I mean, it's just so awesome. It's timeless and holds up. Yes, it does. And then, uh, you did an episode of uh, Dream On? I sure did. That was a lot of fun. John Landis is great. But he, he didn't direct our episode. I forgot the director on that one. Peter Baldwin. Uh, yeah, Peter Baldwin, who is fabulous, but uh, John did come to the set. Uh, yeah, John Landis, I would love to meet him. He just seems very gregarious and very knowledgeable in film. Yeah, he's a definite film star. Yeah, he spent a lot of his childhood, he spent most of his childhood in L.A. and he, like, you know, met all the great directors. Exactly, and, and that show was so ahead of its time, and that was one of the first shows that made it. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. funny. I mean, I'm just thinking about this now, but I, I got to do that show, and HBO was still not a, a household name. Very few people actually knew what HBO was. It was a very, uh, you know, just, just starting network. And then uh, my very first national commercial that I shot was for HBO. It was a huge campaign to make HBO the top the top channel that it is today. Mm -hmm. And Michael Bay directed me for two years and all these commercials that mm -hmm. were so successful that uh, there were photos of us and characters from the commercials that was on the cover of USA Today and, and Wall Street Journal and all this stuff saying that it was the most successful commercial campaign in history as far as turning the sales numbers around for a product. So that's pretty funny. So I didn't even realize that I just, just now feel like it all just did not seem off
favorite uh, big studio movie was I Want to Hold Your Hand. Like, like, like one of the first ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. Absolutely, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what's that? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, uh, how did you get this rule? I just auditioned for it. There's a simple audition process. Yep, just a simple audition process. Or like I'm casting against type, meaning taking a girl that probably make her be younger. Yes, I do. But yeah, so hard. Mm-hmm. It was one of the first movies that uh, Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale made. Uh, Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. What was it like working with them? Yeah, they were terrific. And, and it was actually Spielberg's first second, right? Because Spielberg was on set. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, no, it was amazing. I remember they were, you know, both, I think they were both doing it. It was their first time. And, I mean, obviously, I had a very small part, but it was great to be involved with that. It was a very cute story. It was a lot of fun being on set. Nancy Allen was in it. I I met her earlier this year at a convention. Yeah, she's great, Nancy. Yeah, she was very sweet. Very much the star. She was dressed very nice, and she was just very personable to everybody. I enjoyed meeting her. Oh, no, she's charming and um Eddie Beeson also I saw him at a signing one of the first signings that I did show her and Eddie was sitting across from me and I'm like dude oh my gosh I haven't seen him since 78 it's pretty amazing yeah he's a hero of mine I hope to meet him someday I just love his work yeah he's a, he's a wonderful wonderful person as well were you a huge uh, Beatles fan growing up I just remember what I 
went through was um, <coughs> had been nominated for. Uh, oh yeah, Robert Mulligan. Robert Mulligan, yeah, right. To a month, it's like holy crap! Like, you know, I guess I guess I've said this previously that it just seems sometimes I, I look back and I just have this um, little um, thing flitting from job to job, and you know, not really. It's like now I'm very much more interested. In, Yeah, 
Rubik's wrote about. Um, she really should be. Um,
did, and then when a major studio bought it after the independent studio closed down, they decided to call it Meatballs Part 2 so it would make money. Oh, it, oh, it happens. It happens all the time in Hollywood in those days. It doesn't happen anymore now. But back then, it was pretty common. Oh, yeah, sure. Right, exactly. Wait a minute, how are we going to spin this? Well, yeah, let's just shoot the thing. We don't see that work. I know. 
I never saw it.
horror films they're directing Lifetime movies now. <laughs> yeah, how funny is that? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't say, yeah, who knew? So, like, you know, I, I, I joke, it's like after we did the, the talking uh, cat and the Easter Bunny the talking pony, I'm like, what are we doing with talking with you? Thank you so much for having me on the show. My pleasure.